Hi guys, welcome back to Kid Car Direct and MK Sports Cars. Sorry about the last couple of weeks, workshop walks have been slightly varied. We did a live thing with Jim and then we was at Blyton Park last weekend for pit lane walk, etc. So back to normality, but outside, sun's glorious. So we had a couple of cars outside. Um, I thought we'd push them outside so you can have a bit of a look around at the, the variety of cars that we sort of got in the workshop at the moment that we're doing. So let's start off here. You've seen this one, it's been over a long period of time, but we've had some bodywork changes. This started off with um, the new bonnet on this. This car was a trial for it all. So this is why things took differently. New different side panel, sort of blended in rear wing, etc. We've got a new, different style nose cone coming at some point as well. But we've done little touches and changes on this car uh, for Ben, and we're prepping it now for IVA. So CBR 1000 RR engine, um, custom roll cage, on this as well, um, really nice and tied. It's got carbon dashboard, carbon center tunnel that we do. We do all of these carbon bits, carbon sensor, one piece, very nice. Our paddle shift on it, quick release boss, DD2 light dash. We've got all the aluminum switches in and the two indicators in the base here. Um, our seat pads in here as well, diamond stitch. It's got our, the floor mounted billet pedal box in there. Um, it's the can man's just zooming in there for you, you can see, but um, just about get it maybe under there. Anyway, you know what it looks like, guys. I think we've shown you enough times. Um, this is the first trial fit of also the boot box, uh, which is for the R chassis. Um, there is some modification trimming you have to do to make them fit because there is different roll cages and roll bars that they do fit. But it's got these two humps in here that is to clear on these. These do not fit the standard classic chassis. They are different. We do, we do a boot, do one, but we do do a boot box for that, so that is fine as well. But this is a new for the R type of chassis, really. Um, and it will depend if you've had a custom made fuel tank, then it may not fit. You may have to move the hose, etc., or cut a hole in for your fuel cover. Bit of hose, but LED light pack on this and the uh, aero style catch on it. It's different kind of light where you wanted his fog and reverse because they're, they're ones that tuck up out of the way afterwards when he goes out on track. Compromotive CXRs. Uh, on it all the way round, anthracites with R triple eight R tyres. Um, so our manifold, what we do for the CBR four into two into one. It's got our cat silencer on at the moment for IVA. Four. No Neil's just noticed no bonnet catches. A few people have probably done this. I don't know, but we've trial fitted done this one again. So we've got some two little catches here. So this is a regular. The standard rubber IVA base catches that we've done on here, and for this one, we've trial something here which is a fitting which is a completely flush fit, non nothing here at all in there to show where it's fitted. But a little bit of a wiggle, a little bit of a fettle, got a little bit of fettling to do on that, but nothing major. And then we have two little bullets blocks that are in here, as you can see, uh, they pick up on two parts of the scuttle. Joseph was clever enough to get his head around that one and uh, sort that out. Uh, we've got some bungs to put in and things like that, but it's the first fit with these blocks. So it'd be like a hidden fixing. We'll take it off and have a look under the engine bay while you're there, actually. So CBR, 1000 RR, they make good power in a 190 horsepower. Hydraulic clutch conversion we've done on this as well. Um, carbon bulkhead panel. Uh, we've detailed all the alley tanks now down into a sort of a painted finish as well. Paddle shift mechanism here. Uh, your pot's down in here. We've detailed all the engine as well in the grey to sort of tie in. Protect shocks all round, aluminium. And then the airbox is modified. We modify them with these. That's like a standard. So if you've got CBR, you have to switch the throttle wheels around the other way and change the mechanism. So then, then this gets bonded on. You have to cut out the airbox and bond this on. Run a k and panel filter in there as well. So you can have a run up a cold air feed if you want to as well. But it keeps it lower under here. And our new scoop, as you see, fits under here as well. It's got a billet sump on it as well. Electric water pump in there. It's a little Bosch water pump. And uh, well, we blank off the water cooling uh, blank for that as well to, to tie that in. So super tidy car, all round tube, all RR chassis this one. Um, looking very tidy, super clean as well. It's a lot of electrics under there with the secondary injectors and that what goes on. So it's about as clean as you can get them, I think under the engine bay there. Um, yeah, super happy. We've just got to do some testing on it now. So a little bit of road testing, little bedding in the things, um, and then she'll be ready off for IVA 
um, etc as well and then hopefully get it registered and out to the customer it's going to live it's most of its life on the track believe it or not so we're doing all this but it's better to have your cars road legal so you can test them as well isn't it i suppose that's um, that's one of those things that uh, that work but sky blue golf blue whichever you call it we call it sky blue um and you may have some decals so we put it onto it later on so that's the cbr booster you've seen this we've been testing this a few times done some run outs in this so the indy rr booster and um, we've just put in some road miles on it um just to clock it in and dial it in um it says the billet uprights on there have ones that we do that has called um, these are cortina based that's sierra based on there so it's got a standard that's a billet one and then the standard you'll see the difference between the two we've got the standard sierra upright on this um 90 of the times a lot of the customer will go the billet new part but you know we still do the ford sierra based ones as well but nice <laughs> same car yeah it geometry wise it's different with the cortina top wishbone um that's different as you can see etc but you can retrofit that afterwards if you want to go cortina later on you can retrofit them on but it's all around tube chassis ford based so they're both rr's both rr's yep so this is nice you've seen it before and the sun it's nice carbon interior all inside there carbon aero screen which i'm sure we're fitting onto the uh sky blue one as well but all carbon side you've seen it but it just shows you in the day like we've done a little start sequence up in this in the week etc as well show people we're getting cxrs on it as well so super clean this is track only it's going out to to europe so track only car on there carbon effect boot cover on there as well which i know you guys have seen before but it's just to show you some details on them and then the black aero cap rather than the uh the silver alley one which you can see on there honda s2000 engine one that was out at blind park last week had a little bit of fun in that um got a few runs out we did a lot of activities last weekend uh at, with 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 the ckc magazine and that feature comes out actually uh should hit your doorstep now the bike engine versus car engine high booster engine versus mazda turbo um so that feature will be hitting the magazine now if you're not subscribe you know get onto the magazine be a nice little feature it's an old question that i've since i've been in the industry has always said you know which is best bike engine versus car engine. well adam did both and he'd give you his opinion i suppose of what he prefers um each to their own you know some people love the bikes some people love the cars so uh, engine wise so honda will be out that's uh got a little refresh today we've tweaked that up ready um ready for its next outing what we do now we head inside workshop so a couple of weeks back now you probably remember the tiger which is peter's car uh, had no engine in it um and the engine's gone back in as well now a few more bits to get it running some electrics just to plumb up and some cooling system to plumb up he's been on with that today um so yeah and just detailed the rocker cover to tie it in fancy. With. yeah very fancy with the black and gold just to tie him with a female's car because he's got black and gold pretty much it's a bit grubby and dirty but that's how it came into us it didn't come in <laughs> we didn't leave it here like that but uh he'll clean it up um i think you might be selling it and doing a mazda base car um very shortly but you know the engine's had a refresh uh, the gearbox gone in that was what was the problem with it so it's had a new gearbox put in there new water pump we've put on it as well which is correct polarity pump because a lot of the ZTEX they run the wrong way we put the correct pump on it now to make sure because he had some cooling issues and we know that that was pretty much I think not helping with it at all so that's a ZTEC we're going to move on to another ZTEC actually Right, another ZTEC. Um, you probably remember this. Uh, probably over a month ago now, about a month ago, engine came in, cam belt destroyed itself, which uh, grenaded the engine. Basically, we got hold of another engine. We've had to do some fettling of that. Again, we changed the water pump on this one um, for collect correct polarity. This is all running now. I just got to do some testing, some brakes, because the car was been out of commission for a long time. So it wasn't just the engine that we're sorting out. It is a lot of stuff has been binding up all the brakes, have been binding up and everything else because it's just been sitting in storage for quite a while. So at least it's all running now. We can get this dialed in now, get it sorted out. The carbs just seem to be running a bit rich as well. But we're fell with that. You know, we're fell with that. All the new had different seats in it had had some uh, new seats put in for all the customer as well um because he's going to use it it's a track day toy only uh, he had some paddy cobras they've gone out so good to see it's all running up again so yeah a few little bits to do tidy up but two little ztex um they go pretty well stock they make about 160 normally with set of carbs or different throttle bodies on them somewhere around that sort of mark but generally reliable fun 
if you change, <laughs> check your cam belts, of course. So, yeah, let's see what else we can find in here, actually. Let's head over to Jigsaw. Well, Jigsaw 1000 time, I suppose. It's K4 in here, we said before, 166 at the Wells, decent horsepower. Uh, we've had this in um, probably. We was looking to keep this and keep this part of our collection as a little track toy, but I think we might have to sell it on. We've got too many cars in here now with the other cars and demo cars. So if you're looking for a Jigsaw 1000 track toy, um, we've gone through the whole car. Uh, literally nut and bolt checked everything um, even took the wishbones off on the front they've all been sh shot blasted and repowder coated all brand new all the front uprights went for all the brakes discs have been done on the front as well uh, where we needed ball joints we've replaced them tidied all the uh, we nearly finished with the engine bay engine bay has been uh, detailed a bit more as well let's just get that clip off while we're there see if we can do this side this has got sort of flared side panels on it as well, so they try and help with the cooling. Um, a big MK graphics set on this one. Uh, so we tidied up the engine bay a little bit, painted all the uh, covers as well. We've got a little bit more detailing cleaning, but we replaced some pipe work where it needed it. Um, gone through the rockers, changed the oil, the oil cooler. The bracketry on it was a bit basic, shall we say. So we put one of our oil cooler mounting kits that we do. If you're looking to an oil cooler and you want a strong mounting, we sell these kits. They're laser cut parts ready to do. You just bend them up, fit them onto our radiators. You know, if you've got a 40 to 55 or 70 mil core, it makes no difference. So that's been done. Interior wise, we've gone through that. Um, all in the center tunnels all been checked. We put a new tunnel top in, all trimmed it there. Um, dashboard's been detailed, seats have been done, all the floor, but everything's been cleaned in, that, in here. The whole back end's been done as well, all completely checked and replaced bushes. You know, you get the old squeak in the car. Well, this had it, a dried out bushes, so we went through the bushes as well where we needed to and changed all of those as well. It's got a nice rear diffuser, rain light, standard light pack, and the uh, CS style, Levante style rear wings, which we spoke about the other week. So, this is pretty much going to go out the door, I think. Um, well, be ready in the next week, really. So if you're looking for a sort of a track day toy, it's not road registered, um, but uh, it probably could be if you wanted to do it. It's got the mountains in it for the electric reverse. But yes, yeah, it's a shame we was going to keep it. We've just run out of room, guys. Run out of room. We was thinking, right, we'll have a track day toy, but we've got this one here, you see. This is the problem. We started another build <laughs> for our own selves. Like we've got already got the booster car demo. We've already got the uh, Mazda Turbo. We've got Holden the Rest 2000. We thought we were going to use that as a track toy. I don't think we're going to have the need for it. So if you're looking for a Jix 1000 car, give us a heads up. So we're on with this. You saw this uh, probably a couple of months ago. What we've been doing again, this is like a development-based car. Um, so it's an R15EY engine, and it's all Mazda running gear. So we use the Mazda front uprights on this. We use the Mazda steering column and modified link bar in there as well. It's all the Mazda geometry, uh, but you can see the Mazda uprights. We like these because they're very light, very small standard joints that we use on them as well the escort rack that we use quick rack but um in the back end is the same so it's uh, we haven't got the diff in there but it runs the mazda diff we've had it in with trial fitting changes and that so it's running mazda rear uprights it'll run the mazda diffs mazda dry shaft um we're running a different fuel tank obviously don't Maz run the mazda pump we use the pump out of the bike in in these generally so where we can we try to run the bike pump on them as well so this is going to have led light pack um, and on this, I think Neil showed you a couple of weeks ago, guys, all the uh, trick buttons that was done as well for running the indicators and everything else. He's been able to achieve that. And we've got the standard clock sort of should be going behind the dashboard here. And he's managed to achieve that by a couple of weeks' time. I think we should have everything ready on the loom. So the loom, we're making these now. These are going to be off-the-shelf looms ready for you. So if you're going to be running a 5VY package, which is our sort of... Uh, MX5 RX5 MC chassis that we do, we've got plug and play looms. So we'll be running daughter looms that will connect straight into your R15 EY engine via a plug and a plugs into here that goes into your loom. And it runs everything that allows you to extend it and run your dash uh, up here, right behind your clocks here, rather than trying to thousands of wires. All everything's labeled up as you can see, main beam switches. If you're running a standard bike engine or you're running differently on your running that you can run everything else which is already labeled up so it's very universal all your fuse board is here in a little nice tidied away loom section i think is the fog light box are they coming in with them as well i think um, which is for iva compliance fog light boxes as well 
Um, so it's going to be pretty much more plug and play. And I know it scares you to death, the wiring. So we're trying to invest where we can into something that's really more plug and play for you. And that's the whole purpose of the exercise. Ton of R&D gone into it. Neil's done an awesome job and spent loads of time doing it. Even down to new switches that we're pulling in. These are pretty nice. So I know we all like the Black Savage ones, but these are a new switch that we're looking to do. And the feel on these is bang on. And they've got a plug. And they've got a plug rather than stupid little terminals that you get on the Aluminium Savage one. This is a really nice feel to that. Um, so yeah, they're a, they're a switch that we'll, we'll be investing in. And we've got stock coming in on those as well. So that it kind of works a lot simpler for it as well. So this, you'll see progress over the next, it's going to be months, let's be honest, because we've got a lot of builds starting. We've got um, two builds, the chassis over there, ready to start now. They're going into these bays in the next week. So they'll start on that. So plug and play looms, guys, are going to be on your doorstep anytime soon. So don't get frightened. You know, get, if you want to get into building a car now, it's really much more simpler. I mean, even uh, Michael Ford was there last weekend, as he explained on the videos to you in the pit lane walk. You know, you follow the manual. You know, we've had a couple of guys pass. Dave Glazier passed first time the other week. Mark Workhurst, who uh, was out yesterday, passed first time. You know, follow some of the manuals, guys. That's what it's there for. And we're on the end of the phone or an email where we can support. But the manuals are there to give you that heads up. The loom will just make it even more simpler for you. Perfect, I think. Perfect application for the way that we all need to progress. So, cool. Let's go on to another 5 ey Right, we've got another. This is a classic car. This is Max's car. It's come in. Um, we've wanted to start this this week. We've been inundated with work. We've been a little bit behind. So, apologies, Max, for that. Um, yeah, big difference. Pretty obvious stuff, really. And it's a really good example because this one's bare. So, inboard suspension, outboard suspension. Classic. Oh, <laughs> pretty simple, really, because we get it all the time. I've got an NDR, etc. But outboard suspension is your classic one. Um, very low, it was the low cost base derived one. And in the NDR, which was done in 2007 uh, era onwards, the Mazda, etc. 2016 when it took over the RX-5 but it's all inboard suspension um, the back end is completely different as well well the whole chassis is completely different in every single way but um, the, the obvious one is straight away you know you can see it pretty much in front of your eyes suspensions on the outside so it's got an R15EY in here uh, got some clutch issues that we've got to investigate and sort out we're going to be putting the steering column in there so um, yeah we've done an engine swap on this you probably remember now but probably about a year ago now did an engine swap for max he had some issues but he's got a clutch issue now which just going to investigate yeah and it, make, it makes good horsepower can't make the exact numbers but it's like 185 180 180 190 horsepower um they don't make as much talks but they rev to the moon these things freaking ridiculous um really really good um power max is perfect for him for a track day toy that he had so we're going to be get rid of all this clunky steering sierra stuff and then putting on a quick release boss and our solid race column and then also what's going this with the extension on is going because it's massive you can see how far this is out into the drive we've got shortened this by about 40 mil coming down it's too close to the driver so this is going to be shortened all this is coming out all the switch gear etc is coming out and then we'll be shortening that in and with a uh, quick release boss clocks are coming out and we put in a etb digi dash behind the dashboard here as well for max um so a bit of work to do well. yeah i think he's having the switch buttons like we got on here so on this steering wheel boom that is going to be basically his setup that he's having on there as well uh for the indicators horn and, and high beam wireless, they? and they're completely wireless so, yeah no it's on nice little bit of kit on the back here you can see um little bluetooth uh, device there so you don't have to worry about plugging in wires or forgetting to plug it in or etc it just does it automatically um, so yeah we'll be on with this max apologies um, we're a little bit behind but we'll be on with that and investigating all this clutch issue um, I've got an eye inkling what it'll be so hopefully we can get it resolved pretty quickly so that'd be Max's car you see that progress as well so well that's it guys this week I don't know where it's flying by August September now we're in track days are teetering out now for us guys but i think we've got one more in uh to heads up in, in in a couple of weeks but i hope you enjoyed the pit lane walk at blighton check out the magazine ckc bike engine versus um car engine i think that'll be a good read i didn't even read it myself yet I'm waiting for it to hit the doorstep so it'd be nice to to see what adam's uh, views on it really we love the mazda turbo i mean i'm a bike engine fan always have been but hopefully you'll get something out of it 
Cool, guys. Well, like, share. What can I say, guys? I'll catch you next week. Oh, maybe subscribe as well. Subscribe. You get this every week, then. Catch you then, guys. Mm -hmm.